So uh, on, on this particular topic, you know, when, when it comes to talking about digital health specifically uh, and how, uh, how it affects the entire care continuum, I think this is one of our favorite topics at Walter's Kluwer. And it, it, keeps, it keeps us awake uh, on a daily basis. And whenever anybody starts thinking about digital health, right, they start thinking about what is the value, uh, what is the goal of digital health, and how can it actually help? Uh, can we really define uh, you know, certain specific product types which can help us in that particular journey? So when, when people talk about the goal, people talk about is it really better patient outcomes? Uh, is it uh, reducing the burnout that doctors face? Or is it better quality outcomes? Uh, or is it uh, just increasing the efficiency of the healthcare system? All these things uh, go in people's minds. But the, the way we have been able to, uh, in the sense, uh, define digital health, um, I'm just trying to figure out how this works. Yeah. So the way we have defined the goal of digital health is, is to enable the uh, the way healthcare has been driven to enable better patient outcomes and to basically drive equitable healthcare um, availability across the particular system so when when we think about the, this aspect you know and and what has happened in the last few years the pandemic especially has accelerated the use of and the adoption of digital health uh, across the care continuum um, and it has also brought in the fact that it is not an easy path. Um, it requires a lot of investment. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to change the status quo. The adoption becomes an issue. It is challenging to deploy in rural areas. Um, and with so many things to do with limited budgets, how do we really, uh, where do we even start? So there is a lot of questions that people go through when they're thinking about uh, um, you know, digital health. I think, you know, what we have uh, as a product and, and as well as a um, uh, solution is, is solving a lot of these issues. It requires, and I would be happy to, uh, I will spend a couple of minutes towards the end talking about it. I think that really drives home a lot of the elements of the particular mission that we have to drive equitable healthcare as well as better patient outcomes. Starting with the challenge, I think this particular statistic everybody is aware of. Uh, I mean, the practitioner and the population divide, I think, is, is aware at multiple levels. We are uh, lower than the WHO mandated standard. Uh, from a best-in-class uh, societies, the matured markets, we are far lower. Now, considering uh, you know, this particular challenge, uh, and, and this, uh, you know, when we look at the current scenario that has happened over the last few years, the government has started pumping in a lot of money in, in the healthcare system. But still, you know, whenever these practitioners do come out inside the market uh, for practicing, they often um, need help in uh, diagnosing things quickly at a much faster rate and accurately and in a confident manner. So the, 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 the basis of this particular challenge lies in how to change this ratio or how to enable uh, management of this particular ratio. So when we uh, look at how exactly will uh, you know, digital health uh, enable this, I think one of the excerpts that I would like to draw out of a book that Dr. Rajendra Gupta has, has authored is that the move towards evidence-based medicine now, this is a clear, uh, you know, from a clinical standpoint, uh, a very important tenet of, of what we call as digital health is the evidence-based medicine. Now, when it comes to evidence-based medicine, how, how does it really um, help improve uh, or add to the mission? So we will look at how a clinical decision support system, which is based on evidence uh, and, and reliable evidence, uh, can actually have that impact uh, in the entire care continuum. When we look at uh, some of the quotes uh, that we have seen uh, in, in published literature um, uh, in, in, in the newspapers as well as the dailies, we see a CEO talking clearly about the CDSS as being a foundational mechanism uh, to drive better outcomes, to reduce ph uh, physician burnouts. It also combines a whole huge data set of information and distills it and, and gives that ready, sizable, 
summarize recommendation for, for a particular doctor, and that's how the clinical decision support system um, um, is, is defined. It, it is based on evidence-based medicine. Now, why, uh, and why clinical decision support is, is important? When we look at the complete journey of, of the care continuum, we, you know, broadly we have five major decision points and in which uh, uh, there are a lot of questions uh, that, that the doctors, the nurses, different stakeholders providing the care and including patients are dependent on, on such a system. So when we think of, uh, of, of these five critical things, any delays or any, uh, any wrong decisions can adversely affect. At a bare minimum, they will delay the complete treatment and delay the outcome as well. So when we, when we look at uh, CDSS, we look at the complete care continuum as well. So how do we really define this? Because it really is fitting into multiple different facets. It really is uh, getting into different aspects of the care continuum, including the patient aspect. So how do we define the CDS system? So the way we have uh, defined it is basis on, on six different tenets. I think one of them is, is evidence-based, uh, which was covered. Uh, and it needs to have the latest evidence. It needs to have the ability to be accessible on any platform, anywhere, at any point in time. It should be a consistent source of information, consistent source of reliable information. It should support uh, the medical education and the entire continuing medical education aspect of, of healthcare uh, for its practitioners. And it should also help in the practitioner to patient or practitioner to relative that, that kind of engagement as well. So when we look at CDSS, we look at defining it across the care continuum. And that's, that's how uh, uh, we look at uh, CDSS. Now, when, when people try to define value uh, about CDS systems, and I think this is one of the most important things that, that people try and uh, understand why it is being valued. Now, the volume of literature faced by, by clinicians is humongous. And, and uh, typically, we have, uh, we have some peer-reviewed studies which state that about 15 to 20 different questions uh, arise out of the many decisions that they have to make in a daily basis. Now, these are unanswered questions. 60% of this actually goes unanswered without a CDSS system, and this is a peer-reviewed study. Now, answering all these questions changes the treatment path five to eight times uh, in, in a, and has the impact on, on those choices that are made. So with the CDSS system, you can reduce this, uh, uh, this variability and, and get multiple questions uh, answered. Just to give you a glimpse of how clinical decision support systems are used worldwide, I think um, one of our, we have about 12,300 topics mentioned on our, on our clinical decision support system. Each clinical topic is, is, uh, is accessed about 1,200 times a minute worldwide. Uh, now, by the time uh, when I started talking, the same website has been accessed about 8,000 different times uh, right here. Uh, and as, as uh, somebody popularly calls it, saying that you know, the clinical decision support system is like having a group of experts right in your pocket, accessible on your cell phone. So I think uh, given this uh, uh, kind of, uh, um, you know, system, uh, we also wanted to path out how, how do people benefit out of this system. So a study based in uh, uh, Tokyo Hospital, a place which used CDSS and uh, the same place which did not use, the two states were plotted, the diagnostic error when they did not use this was at 24%. And that reduced to 2%. So that's a lot of clinical value that can be derived out of these. The other aspect, I think, uh, whenever we talk about clinical decision support systems, often there are a lot of myths that surround it. People ex think that it is a complex system, difficult to implement. You need an M EMR. I want to dispel those myths today. You do not need an EMR to actually use this solution. You do not need expensive infrastructure. And primarily, it's not a replacement of a clinician. It is adding to the value and the efficiency of a clinician that he brings. And it's not just doctors. It can be scoped out to physician assistants, as well as nurses, many people who are involved in the, in the um, care delivery process. 
And the most important piece is it's not just about technology. It is about the content. It is about the credibility behind the content. And it is uh, with the fact that that content drives the confidence that a clinician needs when they are treating a, a particular patient. Now, when it comes to uh, some, some of the realizing, you know, realizing the ROI behind the, this particular system, when we look at, uh, you know, how do we actually um, realize the particular ROI, we look at the clinical value aspect of it, we look at reducing medication errors, we can look at fewer procedures, it affects the, it increases, improves the reputation of a hospital, it reduces the uh, physician burnout, uh, there are few things that people usually look out uh, when they are considering such a solution. You know, it needs to be basically uh, latest and greatest, accessible anywhere, credible information. It should support uh, um, in, in getting that information very quickly so that it can be used at the point of care. So when it comes to uh, uh, driving value out of this, the clinical value is 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 what we what we covered. You know, it, it is improving the reputation overall. You know, one saved patient, one complex case can really power your clinician's practice and develop that word of mouth in that particular market. Now, some one more research where we would like to point out the use of CDSS is at a hospital in Singapore, and the way they derived value. I mean, once they had the solution, 37% of the patient care decisions changed. 37%. That's incredible. Another study uh, conducted by Harvard, uh, uh, and, and this was a US-based study over a period of three years, CDSS system was used regularly and on point. 11,500 patients' lives were saved. That's incredible. And, and I think uh, a study that points towards that number clearly defines the clinical ROI behind this. Uh, it also meant that a lot of, I think, some 350,000 hospital stay days were, were eliminated. And, and that means more patients can be taken care of within the same timeline. Another incredible, I think, out of the many patient stories that we come across, uh, I'm sorry. I think I will just go ahead with the story. So before we get to this, you know, it was about a one month old uh, uh, boy um, who was in Japan and, and this person, the parents show up in front of, uh, front of the uh, 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 clinician and Dr. Satoshi-san was actually treating them. And he immediately realizes that, you know, the, the, the boy, uh, the one month old baby is in really uh, critical condition and he needs to take action. He runs some medical tests immediately finds that it's, it could be some kind of uh, a ketoacidosis, which is an indicator of type 1 diabetes. And this is extremely rare in, in a one month old. Now, he talked to his peers, I mean, and a lot of them said that it's a rare situation, verify, recheck. He then turned to up to date, use the differential diagnosis tools that are available, the information that is available, and the most likely outcome came to be the type 1 diabetes. So with that confidence, he moved ahead and started the treatment. And uh, you know, this, this story has a happy ending. And till date, you know, I think the parents are so thankful. They do send a picture of that boy every year on his birthday to the doctor. And, and these are the kind of stories that really uh, make us work and, and make this product better uh, on the long run. Over here on the slide, you can see that even at an institution in India, we have CDSS as, as something that needs to be adopted across the care continuum. Uh, we can clearly see uh, the callouts uh, from a chief medical director at, at one of the largest institu medical institutions in India, private medical institutions. Some of the, uh, the clinical decision support system that we have, uh, it's called UpToDate. Um, key statistics about that, uh, we have close to 2 million users worldwide about 32,000 super specialists in India who use that system. Uh, we, we have about 12,300 clinical topics covered. We scan about 420 different journals. We have close to 10,000 graded recommendations. We have a 30-year history of having this solution in place. And it has a higher NPS than Apple. 
Now, uh, you know, I'd like to end this, uh, uh, you know, close on, on this uh, particular topic um, when it comes to digital health and clinical decision support. How do we, and, and one of some of our uh, achievements or rather uh, goals is to put this in every hospital, uh, put this across uh, every available clinician, uh, support training clinicians in the future. We are over there. Uh, we will, uh, you know, certainly uh, appreciate a lot of support in, in this particular mission. I think uh, when it comes to cleaning, uh, you know, powering your clinician's practice, there is nothing better that you can give him as compared to a clinical decision support tool. It is very hard. It's a very hard profession. Uh, and, and, you know, you have to put up a brave face in front of the doctor, in front of the patient. And that means that you get lesser opportunities to consult even your peers. You can have this on your app. You can consult it. It has a 30-year history. It has an editorial rigor with experts from this field. And, and we have had huge success in India so far. So with that being said, I would like to open any, uh, for any questions uh, if you have any some, some time left. All right. I think thanks for uh, giving this time. I think uh, uh, I think we have uh, covered a serious topic. It's really in interesting. We have a booth outside. If you want to explore a little bit more about what this up to date really is, welcome. Thank you.